Hey guys, Crispy Bacon here with a new Titan build for you. This build is specifically meant for Gambit Prime, but it can easily be swapped over to any PvE content. I call it Plague Bringer. Let's take a look. The first thing that I like to do in all of my build videos is go over each piece of gear that I'm using, just to make sure that everyone's on the same page in terms of what is required to make this build yourself, as well as all of the synergies at play. So let's start out with our primary weapon. The first weapon to showcase here in our primary slot is Threat Level. Threat Level is a shotgun that can be acquired from Season of the Forge, more specifically, completing encounters within the Scourge of the Past raid. The perk rolls are random, and the drop is not guaranteed, so it may take a bit of farming to acquire this gun. My threat level has Trench Barrel on it, which, if you don't know, provides a 3 second damage buff to the shotgun after meleeing an enemy. This perk is not necessary, but it definitely helps out. For my mod, I chose Major Spec to help take out stronger enemies, especially Majors that spawn within Gambit Prime. Here in our secondary slot is where things get a bit more complicated. I actually have two separate recommended weapons. When fighting the Fallen or the Hive with this build, we will be using Risk Runner. Risk Runner is an exotic submachine gun that can be acquired from any exotic drop source. What makes Risk Runner special is that when you're hit by any arc damage, you gain increased defense against further arc damage, while also shooting chain lightning bullets that arc between enemies and refill your magazine automatically. This is incredible when we're fighting the Fallen or dealing with any enemies that use primarily arc damage. And when we're not fighting the Fallen or the Hive, we're going to switch over to the Fighting Lion. Fighting Lion is a grenade launcher that can be acquired from any exotic drop source. This launcher stands out for a few reasons. The first being that it uses primary ammo instead of special ammo, it guarantees primary ammo when killing an enemy, and it also does more damage to enemy shields upon direct impact. Furthermore, after dealing damage with the Fighting Lion, killing any enemy with any other weapon or ability will immediately reload this grenade launcher. Moving on to our heavy slot, we once again have two options here. The first being 21% Delirium. This is Gambit's pinnacle weapon from the current season. To begin the pinnacle quest, speak to Drifter in the tower, and he'll set you on the path to acquire it. What makes this gun stand out is its special perks, Killing Tally and Overflow. Killing Tally provides this weapon with a damage buff from each enemy slain, stacking up to three times, and only being lost upon reload or swapping weapons. Overflow causes this weapon's magazine to increase to 200 plus rounds when picking up special or heavy ammo. For mods, boss spec is the way to go, allowing this weapon to do significant damage to bosses while remaining a threat to all other enemy types, including invaders. Our second option in the heavy slot is Crooked Fang 4FR, or any linear fusion rifle that you prefer that is legendary. This weapon is meant to be a swap out for the 21% delirium when the enemy team is invading a lot and their invader is very skilled. Everyone needs to participate in helping kill the invader and only having 21% delirium can sometimes leave you at a disadvantage. The Crooked Fang is great at counter sniping any invader and also remains to be a decent damage dealer against bosses. Now onto our armor set. As mentioned in the title of this video, this is specifically meant to be a Reaper build within Gambit Prime, meaning that any and all Reaper armor is going to help us out a lot. I have the full Notorious set, which is the strongest set obtainable, and I use an exotic swap out for my arms. This armor can be farmed for within the Tier 3 Reckoning activity, accessed within the Gambit node on the Director. The goal of a Reaper in Gambit is to kill as many enemies as possible as fast as possible, so let's go ahead and brush up on the perks that our Reaper set can provide us. So while we are wearing our Reaper set, damaging a high value target or non-primeval ultra marks it and weakens it for allies, rapidly defeating multiple combatants drops special ammo for allies, motes we generate have an increased lifetime, and defeating powerful enemies grants a temporary surge in grenade recharge rate. So with this setup we only have 12 points out of the maximum 15, and that's because we're only using 4 of the 5 Reaper armor pieces with an exotic swap out on our arms. But that's okay, we can still get the plus 15 to get those major rewards by using something called a Reaper Synth. Reaper Synths are items that are acquired from playing Gambit Prime and killing a lot of enemies. This item can be used in the inventory to give you a plus 3 bonus to your Reaper armor set, and this effect lasts 30 minutes. This is the same item that is used to forge this armor set within the Reckoning, and we like to use it just about every 2 matches to make sure that the Reaper Synth bonus lasts throughout the entire match. Now when it comes to our perks and mods for this setup, there are a few things to keep in mind. We're going to be doing a 3-2 split between impact mods and super mods. Impact mods are meant to help us recharge our melee ability faster, while super mods, as their name might suggest, are going to help us recharge our super faster. One important perk to keep in mind here is pump action. 
Pump action allows us to recharge our super faster with each shotgun kill, which will definitely come in handy later. Now we went ahead and saved the best for last here. In our arm slot is the exotic Doomfang Pauldron. Doomfang Pauldron can actually be provided to you for free by doing the main campaign of Destiny, so most of you should have it at this point. Let me read the perk description for you. Void melee kills give super energy. While Sentinel Shield is active, melee kills recharge shield throw, which extends your super on hits. So there's a lot going on here, so let's unpack this really quick. So using a void melee ability to kill an enemy will give you super energy, and it is not stingy here. Also, while you have your Sentinel Shield super active, meleeing an enemy with that shield and killing them will actually instantly recharge your shield throw, and every enemy you hit with shield throw actually extends your super. So as long as you're switching between meleeing with the shield and throwing the shield, this super can last a very long time, upwards of 40 seconds. So now we've gotten to my favorite part of the build, my favorite subclass at the moment, and really the thing that brings all of these weapon and armor piece choices together. This is Code of the Commander, which is a Sentinel Titan subclass. Let's take a look at the perks. Banner Shield. Guard with Sentinel Shield to create a defensive wall. Allies who shoot through the wall have increased weapon damage, and guarding allies makes the shield last longer. Tactical Strike. Strike an enemy with this melee ability to cause a void explosion. Controlled Demolition. Hit a target with a void ability to attach a void detonator. Further hits cause the detonator to explode, dealing damage to surrounding enemies. And Resupply. You and nearby allies regain health as well as grenade and melee energy when your void detonators explode. So it's this perk right here, Controlled Demolition, that is why we are using this subclass and is what makes it so strong. So let me explain. Anytime you hit an enemy with a melee ability, a grenade ability, or even any part of your super, it basically attaches this void detonator to them, and then further damage onto that same enemy will blow up that void detonator which does a ton of damage to surrounding enemies, but also attaches void detonators to any enemy that was hit, and the process just keeps repeating, and it makes this like nuclear explosion when you have groups of enemies, and it's just an incredible thing to see. But see, in addition to that, every time one of these detonators explodes, you get health, grenade, and melee energy. So if you have a group of enemies and you're just laying into them with these explosions, it makes this chain reaction that no other subclass can match, and it's really what makes this build stand out. So I, I don't always think that people grasp how strong void detonators are in the subclass, so to remedy that, I went to Mars, and I decided to punch a thrall. And I want you guys to see what happened from that one single punch. So when I punched that first thrall, it did a few things. First of all, we let out a void explosion, which happens when we melee an enemy. And that void explosion attached void detonators to every surrounding thrall around the original. Now when that original thrall died from my melee attack, it exploded because of its void detonator, which then triggered each void detonator on the surrounding thrall and led to that chain reaction that you saw there. We killed about upwards of 20 thrall, and that kind of power from one melee attack cannot be overlooked. And in addition to that, you might have noticed how much super energy I got. And that is from Doomfang Pauldrons, because remember, every time we have a melee ability kill, we actually get a ton of super energy. So we got all of that super energy from the kill, and then all of the energy from all of the enemies that died. So it gave us a ton of super energy from just one punch. So think about this combo here really quick. Every time we get a melee ability kill, we are getting tons of super energy. Past that point, every Void Detonator explosion is refreshing our melee ability cooldown, and we also have three impact mods on, meaning that we are getting our melee ability like about every 10 seconds or so, and then every time we finish an enemy with that melee ability, we are getting a ton of super energy. And then when we have our super, as long as we are comboing that melee attack with the shield throw, the super can last upwards of 40 seconds. And then every time a shield throw hits or a melee ability hits while we're in super, that is putting a void detonator on the enemies that we're hitting. So it just makes this fireworks show of void explosions and you can wipe out an entire area in just a few seconds. And it's one of the most empowering feelings you can have. So these void detonators and all of our abilities are going to be essentially the cornerstone of this build, but they require us to be relatively close quarters to do so. And that's why I chose the weaponry that I did. You know, I have a shotgun in my primary slot, which, after you melee an enemy and apply those void detonators to all enemies in the vicinity, a trench barrel buffed shotgun blast is just going to create this chain reaction that's really beneficial. 
and then Risk Renner, when we're fighting the Fallen and the Hive, you know, we're taking a lot of arc damage, and all of those enemies that are coated with the Void Detonator, and then hit by this arc bolt from the Risk Runner, chaining to multiple enemies at the same time, just makes this incredible chain reaction that I don't think any other exotic primary type weapon can really benefit from. And then lastly, again, we have Fighting Lion, which by itself can seem underwhelming, but when you combo it with a shotgun, it really shines. You know, every time we hit an enemy with a grenade, and then switch to the shotgun and kill an enemy, it's going to reload that grenade launcher. So it makes this great combat rhythm of shooting a grenade with the fighting lion, swapping to a shotgun, killing an enemy instantly, and there's even a melee in between, which means that void detonators are exploding this whole time when we're in close quarters, and we're benefiting from all of the benefits that the subclass provides. So again, these are the reasons that I chose these weapons, and I did just want to cover that before we finished up the video. Now one thing I haven't even mentioned yet is the Void Wall Grenade. This is the grenade we're using with the subclass, and I truly believe this is the best grenade in the game, especially comboed with the Sentinel Titan. So, the reason it's so good is because Void Wall Grenade, as long as it's hitting an enemy, is constantly applying Void Detonator. So you can actually apply Void Detonator multiple times to a single enemy with one Void Wall Grenade. This is a great grenade to throw like under a boss's foot because it's just going to sit there. That boss is going to keep building up those void detonators. It's going to explode multiple times, doing ton of damage to the boss, healing anyone around it, and also refreshing your melee and grenade ability cooldowns. And if that grenade by itself was not good enough, we have something very special. Now let's go back before we talked about that last perk we have as a reaper that is called Major Rewards. Defeating powerful enemies grants a temporary surge in grenade recharge rate. This comes in handy so much during Gambit Prime, because every time you kill one of the wizards, or any major for that matter, you are able to throw three grenades back to back to back. And three void wall grenades? That's probably some of the strongest ability damage that you can achieve in this game. When, it's, when it comes to a huge group of mobs, or when it comes to the boss that you're trying to defeat, three void wall grenades back to back to back is a ton of damage, and also it's giving you health and restoring your cooldowns. So that combo, that void wall grenade mixed with major rewards, is probably as good as you're going to get when it comes to the Reaper set. So there's been a lot to cover here, thank you much for sticking around. But there's even one more synergy I haven't covered yet. So we had talked earlier about major rewards, and how whenever we kill a major enemy it gives us enhanced grenade cooldown. Well, funny enough, when you're in your Sentinel Shield Super, shield throws actually count as grenade abilities. Kinda weird, right? But what that means here is that whenever we kill a Major within our Super, we are able to throw three shields back to back to back. Now this is great in its own right, but you have to think about the fact that we're using Doomfang Pauldrons, and then each of those shield hits is going to extend our Super even more. And furthermore, if that wasn't enough, each of those shield hits is putting a Void Detonator on each of the enemies that are hit, those are exploding, and those are giving us enhanced melee and grenade and health regen. It's, it's absolutely crazy how much synergy there is going on here, but I think that about does it. But hey guys, thank you so much for watching. That's the end of the build, so if you're just here for the build and the gameplay, feel free to dipski. I do have a few other things I want to mention before we finish up here. We made it to 3,000 subscribers, guys. That's seriously incredible stuff. Thank you guys so much for all the support, and I'm honestly just glad that a lot of people are finding value out of this content. A lot of you have been reaching out to me on Discord and on PSN and on Twitch, and if you want to contact me, just check the description to see how you can do so. I'm always down to talk with you, and I've been playing with a lot of people. Even got Luna's Howl for a few fellas the other day, so I'm always down to play. There is one point of contention I do want to mention. That rhymes didn't mean that, but... Um, on my Warlock and my Hunter videos, um, I got a lot of comments saying that it was a bit clickbaity to use the title of Strongest Build of All Time. And looking back on that, I, I do tend to agree and I do apologize for that, but the goal was never to clickbait. Honestly, when I made that first Titan video and named it Strongest Build of All Time, I did truly believe that that is the strongest build of all time for Titan, and I still kind of believe so. And the whole theme was to stick with Loaded Question for all three of those builds in my eyes. And a lot of people disagreed with my second two builds being the strongest, even though it got a lot of positive feedback. I just do want to mention that my goal is never to clickbait, and in the future I'm going to be formatting my titles in a way that leaves the power relatively up to the viewer instead of trying to clickbait something like the strongest build of all time. I just want to say my intentions are sincere, and I really just want to make the best builds possible for you guys. So thanks for supporting me, and I hope I didn't disappoint too many of you. But, you know, we're going to be making another video soon, so I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'll see you in the future. Have a good one.